Do 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 do. Hear ye, hear ye. I have royal orders in this very royal scroll. It says that you, that's you, the audience, must listen to a rendition of William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dr Night's Mare. Dream. Dream? A Midsummer Night's Dream. Have you even read this scene? Looks like a nightmare to me. What are you talking about? I love a good love triangle. Or like a tragic love dodecahedron. You clearly don't understand the scene. You go sit in the audience and I will finish the introduction. So now, without further ado, we introduce to you Bruria's rendition of William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, Act 1, Scene 2. Act 2, Scene 1! Oh, shoot. Whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, through brush, through fire. Over, over park, over pale, through flood, through fire. I do wander everywhere, swift in the moon's sphere, and I serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green. The cowslips tall her pensioners be, in their gold coat spots you see. Those be rubies, fairy favors. In those freckles live their savers. I must go seek some two drops here. And hang a pearl in every cowslip's ear. Farewell, thou love of spirits. All be gone. Our queen and all her elves come here and not. The king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed, the queen come not within his sight. For Oberon is passing fell in wrath. Because that she as her attendant hath. Yes. A lovely boy stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling. And jealous Oberon would have the child, knight of his train to trace the forest wild. But she, perforce, withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. And now they never meet in grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen. Yet they do square that all their elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape and making quite, or else you are <laughs> that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are not you he that frights the maidens of the villagery? Skim milk and sometimes labor in the corn. <clears throat> and Lulis makes the breathless housewife churn. And sometimes make the drink to bear no barn. Mislead night wanderers, laughing at their harm. Those that hobgoblin call you and sweet puck, you do their work and they shall have good luck. Are not you he? And thou speakest aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile when I fat and being fed horse beguile, neighing in the likeness of a filly foal. And sometime lurk I in a gossip's bowl, in the very likeness of a roasted crab. Then when she drinks against her lips, I bob, and on her withered dewlap pour the ale. The wisest aunt telling the saddest tale, sometime for a three-foot stole mistaketh me. Then slip I from her bum, down topples she, and Taylor rise and falls into a cup, and the whole choir hold their hips and laugh. hour was never wasted there. But real fairy, here comes Oberon. And here my mistress, would that he were gone. Do, 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 do. Ill met by moonlight. Proud to Tanya. What jealous Oberon? Fairies, skip hence. I've forsworn his bed and company. Terry Rash wanted, and not I, thy lord. Then I must be thy lady. But I know 
when that was stolen away from Fairyland in the shape of corn, sat all day playing on pipes of corn and bursting love to amorous Philida. Why art thou here? Come from the farthest step of India, but that pursuit the bouncing Amazon, your buskin mistress and your warrior love to Theseus must be weighed, and you come to get their bed joy and prosperity. How can Southus for shame to Tanya? Glance at my credit with Apollota, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. Didst thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Perigenia, whom he ravished, and make him with fair Aegle break his face with Ariadne and Antiopa? These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never, since the middle of summer spring met we on hill in jail, forest or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, or on the beach margin of the sea, to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But with thy brawls, thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain, as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling in the land have ever pelting murder made so proud that they have overborne their continents. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the plowman's lost his, his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field, and crows are fatted with the murrian flock. Nine men's morris is filled up with mud, and the quaint mazes in the wanton green for lack of tread are undistinguishable. The human mortals want their winter here. No night is now with him or Carol blessed. Therefore the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air their rheumatic diseases do abound. And through this distemperature we see the seasons alter. Hoary-headed frosts fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose, and on old times thin and icy crown, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds is, as in mockery, set. The spring, the summer, the childing autumn, angry winter change their wanted liveries, and the maize world by their increase now knows not which is which. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. His mother was votaress of my order. And in the spiced Indian air by night, full often has she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on flood. When we had laughed to see the sails conceive and grow big belly with the wanton wind, which she with pretty and with swimming gate following, her womb then rich with my young squire would imitate and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again as from a voyage rich with merchandise. <laughs> but she, being mortal, of that boy did die. <clears throat> and for her sake do I rear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long would Miss Wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus's wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies, away. We shall chide downright if I longer stay. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. <sighs> My gentle Puck, come hither. Thou rememberest since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. That very time I saw, but thou couldst not. Flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all armed, a certain Amy took in a fair vestal thrown by the west, 
and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. Yet I might see on Cupid's fiery shaft, quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon, an imperial Voltaris passed on and made a meditation fancy free. Yet marked I where the vault of Cupid fell, fell upon a little western flower. Before milked white, now purple with love's wound, and maidens call it love and idleness. Fetch me that flower, the herb I shewed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature it sees. Fetch me that flower, and be thou here again ere the leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girl round about the earth in 40 minutes. Having once this juice, I'll wash Titania when she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. Blink. The next thing she then waking looks upon being on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And in her take this charm from off her sight as I can with another herb. I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I'm invisible. And I will overhear their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? What I'll say, other say. Thou told me they were stolen onto this wood, and here am I and in this wood because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence, Get thee gone and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. And you draw not iron. For my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? And even for that, do I love you the more? I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me, only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. What worse or place can I beg in your love, and yet a place? of high respect with me than to be used as you use your dog. Of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look And I am sick when I look not on you. You do impute your modesty too much. To leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not. To trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a deserved place the rich worth of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege. For that, it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I am not in the night, nor doth this wood lack worlds of company for you. In my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said, I am alone? And all the world swore to look on me. I'll run from thee and hide me in the brace and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. Run when you will. The story 
shall be changed. Apollo flies and Daphne holds the chase. The dove pursues the griffin. The mild hind makes speed to catch the tiger. Bootless speed. When cowardice pursues and valor. Flies. I will not say thy questions. Let me go. Or, if thou shalt follow me, do not believe that I shall do thee mischief in the woods. I, in the temple, in the town, in the field, you do me mischief. Bye, Demetrius! Your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love, as men may do. We should be wooed. We're not made to woo. to make a heaven of hell, to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. I. <laughs> There it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know bank where the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet rusk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania, some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And there a snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. And with the juice of this, will streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it, and seek through this grove the sweet Athenian lady is in love with the disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it so the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Affect it with some care that he may prove more fond of she than he upon her love. And look thou meet me here ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord. Your servant shall do so.